Hi, today on the Marketing 99% podcast, I'm joined by James Gregory, the CEO and founder at Agency Backlinks. I'm super, super excited about this one because my background's in kind of SEO and search marketing. Yep. Um, and we're going to really dive into some really good tactics uh, with James. So thank you very much, James, for joining me. No worries. I was really excited when you uh, reached out because obviously uh, we're in very similar type of industries and backgrounds. Yeah. And to think that you're only in Birmingham and we're based in yeah. South <laughs> crazy, you know, with, with the lockdown and everything, it's nice to uh, kind of have familiar social interaction, even if it's just like an industry thing, you know. Yeah, definitely. So, Awesome. So uh, let's dive straight into it. My first question, we're, and we're going to be talking about one specific aspect of uh, SEO. We're going to be talking yeah. about link building. Um, maybe we'll come back for a round two on other stuff. But um, yeah, what what do you believe is the future of link building um, in 2020 and beyond? Well, I feel as if obviously Google's changing in the sense that how it's storing information and sentiment and the actual intent behind the intent. And I think they're going to start looking at social. So using things like Google fonts and stuff, they can actually curate all your web activity across the web and kind of get an idea of your habits and spend and then sharing that data with Facebook. They can kind of make really detailed personas and almost put you towards certain search results. So I feel as if link building for 2020 is literally going to be um, has to be synergistic with a content marketing strategy, you know, because you need more keyword spread. If you can't guarantee that you're going to show up for these phrases because the intent behind the phrases is constantly changing, you need to be able to deliver ROI, you know. So uh, good content that actually has keyword spread and, you know, link building is going to get harder i'd say in the sense that the standards are going up social yeah. media is having good content out there constantly people's attention spans are getting shorter i feel as if now is where we start like seeing who the real players are in link building and who are the guys that are kind of you know relying on foreign content or yeah. you know, foreign foreign labor which i don't oppose like we have 30 guys in india but they primarily do data harvesting in the sense mm -hmm. of like company's house, link building, finding emails and things rather than obviously writing content. So I do think actually like connecting with people in the industry um, and kind of like a more personalized touch is going to be the future just because with social media, it's like personal brands are taking over, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's really fascinating. Awesome. And I think we've, we've had a really good conversation beforehand. You've sent me over so many things. I've been learning already yeah. from you yeah sorry about that um, and i've been in yeah. the industry for a while you know it is? it's because we just deliver so many links and just, <laughs> oh here's another dr79 oh here's another dr80 oh yeah. here's another dr70 you know what i mean it's just yeah. like they're really good links and they just yeah. constantly come in um but yeah so yeah my, my kind of next question is around tactics so if we, could, we were to give the audience some really good takeaway tactics and quick wins to do uh what can people do um, straight away to get some really good and significant results? Well, when we onboard a client, even not from a link, bu uh, link building standpoint, we'll install things like Link Whisper and find internal linking opportunities. So that's a free WordPress plugin that you can just go ahead and search and install. Mm -hmm. So we'll ramp up the internal linking, then we'll run the site through Surfer SEO, which will correlate like 500 different factors within Google based off what's actually working and ranking. So you're using real data and then updating the content there, submitting a sitemap and then going out there and doing a content plan and then use another free plugin called Link Builder that actually finds prospects and opportunities for you and actually just 50% of all your outreach anyway. So wow. from the start, month one, we're literally doing all of that and we'll post like five or so roundup posts where we specifically chosen certain people from the industry that we know if we reach out to them on LinkedIn, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll be happy to give you a quote. But then people think, oh, OK, I'll just ask someone for something. That's it. Why not just carry on talking to them? Like we literally have hundreds of relationships across like 30 or so LinkedIn accounts where journalists, editors, site owners are more than happy to collaborate with us to the point where they're pitching us you know, opportunities and content. And they're even referring like clients to us, you know, like mm. I think a nice, um, a nice knowledge bomb I could drop is your personas and the people out there, your staff doing the outreach can actually, uh, 
get clients, uh, which is which is really funny. Um, but but we, we, you know, those are the quick wins in the sense of how can we get ranking as soon as possible. Um, and then obviously we spoke about before how some brand new brands um, approach me and they don't even have any social profiles. So straight yeah. away, you can build out all the social profiles, see what partners are in their network. What I love about ex existing suppliers or partners is you can literally put the logos on the website, which not only elevates the brand in terms of positioning, shows who you're working with, is a a legit white hat reciprocal link that isn't going to get you yeah. penalized and you know they're free to do for me the quick wins are always the ones that are really cost effective and there's a low cost per link um, yeah. and obviously when we're able to get really strong links for free to the point where sites are even reaching out to us to have like infographics or guides written up it's uh, quite fascinating to actually get be getting paid twice sometimes yeah. <laughs> uh, to place links you know um but right. uh, social yeah, sure. as well. Yeah, sorry, I've I've got. <laughs> you're gonna have to bring me back on for a second time. <laughs> yeah, got, definitely. I've got about fifty different techniques here that you can literally use straight away. Um, just one last one that I want to mention yeah. for any e-commerce guys that could be listening. Just send free stuff out. Um, so if your client has a really nice product, for example, we're huge in the CBD industry. We've made these really nice hampers with really nice branding. You know, we've had our branding guy, Sam, go deep on the neuroscience on how the person's going to feel when they open that package, what the experience is going to be like. Yeah. And sending something out to these journalists and people that we've already built relationships with. So do you remember how I told you how with the personas we're reaching out to build links to? Well, we have really long term relationships and we're collaborating left and right. You know, it's um, it's a really, really nice way to kind of get the product out there and get free links in the process. You know, for a for a pet magazine that I recently took on, we just gave away twenty five pound Amazon vouchers. We asked people what they thought about uh, coronavirus, the, the coronavirus situation, and and tips on how it can help their pets. You know, um, and as a result, we landed good links from it. And it's just, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just getting those relationships, giving value, and making it a win win. And being able to give someone a 25 pound Amazon voucher in this climate is actually a really nice thing to do, you know, and you might have had to pay like a hundred pound or provide a really big article piece or whatever, but just something like that is a completely different angle. And I'll, yeah. I'll describe it to the guys as a pattern interrupt. You know, you want to be the email that stands out and you want to give them real context to whatever it is they're doing at that moment in time, you know. Link builders, SEOs, digital PR guys, they all forget that it's a real human being on the other side, you know, and it's easy to find someone's phone number and just have a chat with them. You know, I think people need to realize that people are open to dialogue if it's win win and it's going to help them get them further along in the industry, you know. Yeah. Definitely. And um, just just touching on that, um, sending out products and things like yeah. that. And if you, you're working with an influencer, sometimes sometimes SEO is, is 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 forgotten about. And jobs I've worked on in the past where we're working with influencers on social yeah. media, um, if, if SEO is not thought about that, we might not get a link from their kind of personal website. And although the, the personal website doesn't doesn't receive as much traffic or visibility as a kind of one million uh, followed Instagram account. Yeah, that SEO link on their website is is really valuable still. Yeah. So yeah, that's just, that's a great tactic. Thanks that's for that great. one. Obviously, as you say that, those people are going to grow in the future. Yeah. And you know what? If they have a really strong brand identity, strong person, uh, strong personality, they're charismatic on video. We'll literally just hire them. I'll get yeah. a client and I'll just be like, okay, two k a month for you produce loads of videos for us, loads of content for us. Build yeah. out personal site and then all the articles that we're having featured I will then be mentioning products so it's you know it's a much nicer way to kind of give value without blatantly promoting you know you want to kind of make the internet better rather than polluting it with like junk articles um yeah. which you know I was I was guilty of in a previous life when I was in the casino and loans industry and all sorts but you yeah. know now it's more how can we you know work with the best people in the industry and mm. trade them in such a way where we can kind of spearhead them into the next chapter you know that's very much where we want to be taking our seo awesome and kind of in terms of finding contacts and journalists how do you, I, i've spent a lot of time in the past and 
Uh, I'll be totally honest. The, the link building aspect isn't my forte with yeah. uh, SEO. So I've spent a lot of time in the past um, trying to talk to the wrong journalists or talk, find the wrong contacts. H how are you getting the best results with this? And, and you've shared some stuff with me that I found really interesting already. Yeah, so like can you just explain I, that. I get a bit confused when people talk about like go to journal request, help a reporter or the vision when like you can just go on Google or Ahrefs, search for the content piece and find the individual that wrote that and then use Google search operators. Like I told you the one where you do in URL slash author slash graduate and speech marks and then the niche you want. And then through that, I'm able to find authors that are very similar to the type of people that are higher. So I specifically hire people with finance degrees, with people with political journalist degrees, people with psychology degrees, because I know I'm easily going to be able to find them um, to get a personal relationship with someone who's going through this, a very similar path where they're producing content in that industry and they're able to just build almost like a natural rapport and then through that they'll be 30 authors already on the website mm -hmm. and it's almost like we can then just branch out. So we've done this in crypto where it's to the point now where we're producing content on the biggest crypto sites. Like the two links that I just showed you, I've since then been able to piggyback those really big features and then go out to other aspects of finance. Um, yeah. You know, because for me, you've seen my mergers and acquisitions website. This is very much a niche that I want to focus in and I want yeah. to expand to in the future beyond beyond SEO, you know. So finding that piece of content and the author and then simply letting them know that you've acknowledged that and you want yeah. to collaborate on content in the future and giving them a good, you know, almost like a way of one upping their content piece. You want to reach out to them in a cheeky way where they're like, oh, hang on, this guy kind of knows what he's talking about. And then you'll notice that over time, they'll just keep talking to you. And then you can kind of build yeah. a nice natural rapport there. Like I've got a guy and he literally wrote us like a 6,000 word guide for 50 pounds. Wow. And, you know, it, it went it went crazy. And it was like, OK, we're just going to have to give you more and, and, and not for you on because that's great. Yeah. You know, so, so finding people who are already writing good stuff and simply talking to them is probably yeah. the best way. But I would still recommend all those tools. Um, I won't name them all off. If you just Google PR databases, we spend mm -hmm. about 7K a month on all of them. And we're just constantly scanning um, and finding context. We're going into PubMed. We're expanding on the data. We're just going deeper and looking uh, at history more than anyone else is, which mm -hmm. means our success rates on placing these links are just so high. Um, and that's why we're just able to sell them, you know, because we can almost guarantee uh, we can always guarantee, well, we can guarantee in certain industries any value link. Wow. And uh, I'm guessing you see the results after that um, in, in the search in rankings and traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, another great tactic would be if you already know the magazines that you want to be featured upon. So for us, we look at the AH Million, the Majestic Million, and we've already been fetching RSS feeds of every single page on site and crawling and building a database. So no matter what industry or client comes in, we already have the, uh, the author to reach out to. I'm already future pacing all of the outreach. And it's simply yeah. a case of find, finding the website, exporting all the outgo outgoing links, and then seeing where um, who else they're linking out to. They're linking out to other websites. Does that author know this website? How does he know this person? Mm. Like in all the industries that I'm in, we, pre we pretty much have three 300 or 400 sites that we kind of go go towards in each industry and we're yeah. constantly monitoring what they're doing on socials who's posting there who's buying links which companies aren't buying links and from that you get this really nice picture if you then bring in like companies house data and stuff you're able to connect some really nice dots where realistically link you know link building is the last of your worries with that data you know amazing and and just kind of diving deeper in that so so you're saying you might have worked with somebody in the finance space and then you've kind of done your research, got all your authors, and then you yeah. know that this this finance person might also talk about property. So you can onboard a property client and go, right, I've got 50 authors that I've already got relationships with, and that's where that kind of backlog and future proofing comes from. Is that right? Yeah. So in the sense of there would have to be real context there. So it would have to be specifically investing in property. It couldn't be like um John, John the bricklayer from Coventry yeah, wants to yeah. be featured amongst amongst those greats, you know. Um, yeah. And you know what? We've actually um, managed to place businesses like that. There's a guy that I'm working with now. You might have seen him on LinkedIn, Jack McGovern. 
and the sites that we're able to place them with a really strong identity, brand story, great narrative. It, you mm. know, it's phenomenal. So even for the little guy, you can get really good links. And wow. it's to the point where he's, you know, he's growing at a rate that's almost unheard of in his industry. You know, the things wow. that we're launching over the next few months are actually really exciting, you know. Um, Great. Um, so obviously, I've, I've been hit with penalties in the past and not even from doing kind of black hat techniques, but um, how do you respond to Google penalties? Um, so and, I, would, I would very much yeah. want to always be monitoring my links. So every month, uh, all of our clients, all of our personal websites, we're doing um, link loss reports, link gain reports. And then from that, if there's any negative SEO or any links that we haven't built on purpose, we will just disavow and then we'll reach out to those websites and make sure that they're removed. But if there's actually a penalty there, it will be a case of getting someone like Rick Lomas in, um, who's a, one of the best penalty experts, uh, arguably in the world, in the sense that he's removed penalties in days for some of our websites, you know. Um, so I'd very uh, much recommend going to an expert in that. But just let Google know that you're actively aware of the situation, yeah. you know what it's doing to your brand, and that you're doing things and you're actively removing them. Because the worst thing is to just devour the rubbish links and then to not actually go there and remove them. You know, yeah. that's pretty yeah. much what everyone does. And if you want a response from Google, you need to be showing that you're complying with their guidelines, if you will. Um, yeah, definitely. There were some industries that where we were dinged and we were kind of happy to because then once we recovered, the chance of us receiving the penalty again was greatly reduced. Uh, and we were able to get out of that using things like double three hundred one redirects. So there is ways out of it. <laughs> in general, just get the best links. Like why? Yeah. Why even bother with using dodgy links or link networks? Just get really good links. Get experts mm. in a topic and just do better content. And if you can't, find the guy who can. You know. <laughs> well, that's Mr. James Gregory. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, so on to some quick fire questions now, um, and maybe we can touch back on kind of backlinks as well during this. But um, what what brands are inspiring you right now? It doesn't need to be in kind of the SEO world, but uh, uh, what brands are inspiring you and what are they doing right? So I mentioned uh, uh, earlier that we've got the top couple of million websites um, pretty much in existence sorted by DR and we're pulling in data constantly because what I'm starting to do is find a model of what content is going viral, who's making it go viral, which companies are making it go viral, and what was the thoughts and the team behind making it go viral. And then we're simply replicating all of this in our respective industries. And then I found a baby company called Yumi. Now, yeah. what these people did was they hired a children's illustrator to produce a ebook. So it's just an opt in for Rainbow in the Windows. And it's quite funny because on Instagram, I was just flicking through stories. I looked at my sister's story and my nephew would put like rainbows in the windows and stuff. And I was really confused what this is. And I asked her, what's this? And it's like, oh, we're just letting the children know that this is why we're locked in and stuff, why we're on lockdown and we're kind of building immunity. So then when we go mm -hmm. back to the world, you know, people are going to be okay. And she didn't know about that book because I then Googled it and straight away, you can see those guys have Googled it. So for me, that's like they can see Google Trends. So again, Google Trends is another source. They're watching it rise. And as it, it rises, they think, okay, who's the best children's illustrator? That, you know, this it's so relevant and it's such a good message. And they've got really, really mm. good links. You know, look at the the actual page where the opt-in is after you search Rainbow Windows, open it in Ahrefs, and it's a really beautiful way in which they managed to do that. And you know what's crazy? No digital PR, SEO agency. They're not really actively looking and scanning for these things. And I think that is where you get the advantage. We've been doing this for a year now, and it's to the point where we've already been databasing everybody's mm -hmm. LinkedIn statuses. We're seeing how people are interacting on Facebook. We're seeing how it's working, and we're connecting the dots and almost making the world smaller in the sense of yeah. it gets to the point where you know, oh, that was a fantastic piece of content. It's loaded, landed loads of decent links, but it's the awareness of this is what's happening on socials. This is what's happening yeah. here. And because I'm working with a children's brand, we're gonna get a children's illustrator and I know I've told you some elaborate things that I've got going on at the moment with uh, in the CBD and health world where we found influencers that are looking to publish a book and we've actually had our brands that we're working with 
provide us the budget to kind of do the same thing. So very much mm. campaigns like that really inspire me to kind of push the boat. You know, there's some things that we're doing that are just completely ridiculous <laughs> that should never land links. And it's almost like we're just doing them just to kind of showcase to people like, oh, yeah. no, you, you, no, you can. You know? <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, and we've already touched on a lot of tools already. Um, and software but what what should everybody in seo be using right now if you kind of had to narrow it down to maybe two or three key ones i think url profile is really underrated i'm surprised no, not many people talk about it more um it's it's like a easier to use scrape box so scrape box is a must in the sense of it's easy for me to paste in a million domains, remove um, any domains that don't meet my criteria. For example, we work with a guy who backpacks around the world, pretty much the largest website in the world, and we have every single country domain. Um, and I was able to easily filter that down based off sites that we have either already placed on or meet our specific criteria, all within Scrapebox on my laptop. Whereas right. in Excel, if you go over like 100,000 lines, you can't really do much. So in terms of a live checking, mass 404 checking, scrape box, you know, it's, it's a must. And URL profiler, I think, is a lot nicer for kind of the guy in the agency that isn't really that uh, tech heavy like, like, like a, a guy like me would be, but would still want to get stats on URLs. So you can get a magazine, crawl its sitemap, and then see which content got the most social shares across uh, which channel and kind of paint, you know, like a much easier picture and kind of bridge the gap of understanding of, okay, this is what will work on this site. This is what they'll respond to. This is what their audience is loving on social media. And Ahrefs, like for us, we spend a thousand pounds a month just for the data so yeah. we can put it in, into Excel. You know, if I can go on a website, export every single page and know everybody they're linking to and all the DR and how that kind of all links together, it's, you know, it's insane. Um, and SEO tools for Excel to plug into Excel as well. Um, yeah. Screaming Frog for doing audits, which is paid. Xenu, which is, a, you know, I've got a, a, a lot of love for Xenu. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> when I started out in 2013, um, I was uh, scraping for expired domains and I was a really big domain seller and I was using Xenu to find no such host, run them all through diner.bulk domain checker and I was registering those domains that already had link juice and was just pointing them to websites. Um, I, I've, I've seen this, so I just want to dive into that tactic a bit more. Um, I've seen this tactic domains. before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, buying expired domains. So. If you buy the domain, the domain holds the authority, even yeah. if it's hosting on, even if it's bought completely new for a new registry and everything like that. Is that correct? Yeah. So what happens is a lot of people believe, oh, Google reset the links, Google reset the links, which is really like a narrow minded view because obviously the Internet wouldn't work. If Coca-Cola, yeah, course, yeah. if Coca-Cola Cloudflare goes down for a day and they link to thousands of sites, you know, you know what I mean? Oh, if someone picks up an expired domain, the, in, yeah. the, the internet is very much, um, Google has to have a lag of when things go wrong. So when domains are changing hands or they renew it, a new web design company takes over, Google are having to look at the actual content on the page once the domain has been registered. So what I generally do is I'll register the domain, put it back to how it was. You know, some people might think that's slightly unethical, but try and, try and opt for domains yeah. that aren't you know, sensitive subjects. So restore the domain to what it once was, make sure it ranks for its old phrase. So it ranks back to number one yeah. for its phrases. So then that passes the Google filter of, oh, hi mate, yeah, I'm, I'm back to how I was. And then it's <laughs> okay, 60 DR, DR, 40 to 80 links. Um, and then change all the content to whatever it is you want to rank for, and then it just get 301 straight to the client website. That is the safest way to do it. Um, wow. and, and you can literally pick up domains. Uh, so you say DR, I say DA, because I yeah. use most, but um, kind of uh, DR ratings of about 50, 60. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah that's, isn't it? And I'd just like to just quickly just say, like, obviously, I. I, I can respect Moz, the DA value, and they get getting quicker or whatever, but the DR metric is very much live data, and they've got 70, 80% of the internet, whereas Moz have mm -hmm. like 30%. So I do feel as if screening domains, screening links, if you're using Moz, um, you're making a conscious effort to do less SEO with your time, mm -hmm. which is, yeah. which is, uh, is, is a bit weird. I think Ahrefs is almost a must. 
because yeah. you can literally get all the, all of the possible links. You know, not not all the websites of the in, in the internet are in the top the top million. You know, yeah. Um, but right. yeah, so in terms of using expired domains, definitely go to places like GoDaddy auctions where you can clearly vet them. You can look at the SEMrush um, graph on all the Google updates and see when the domains actually dropped to ensure um, that they weren't dropped during a Google update because they had yeah. bad links. Screen the links, the anchor text ratio, just everything that you would do when you're screening any good link, really. And yeah. then once you've done that, you can do what I said, which is just restore the site, you know? That's yeah. fantastic. Love that. Awesome. Um, so just talking about books and podcasts and blogs, um, well, would you recommend, I don't know if you, I, I've never read an SEO book, I suppose, but is, is there any kind of books or uh, websites yeah, see, for that me, you hang around? Yeah, like what, what, what I did, it was more, I was at a company that wanted to uh, get into SEO. They put me on a course and then I found very specific guides and I actually found a community and I'd actually built a community with a really well-known um, SEO guy called the Proper SEO Group. It's still 25,000 people and it was actually called the Proper PBN Group, which was obviously using expired domains, um, which we spoke about earlier. But definitely joining the community of people who are already doing it and can give you models and the confidence required. You know, humans are literally just a reflection of each other. And the only way you will do something is if you see it done. So just yeah. go to the people who are already doing it the best and just get them to show you, you know. Perfect. And uh, I see a few books behind you. Any any favourite either? I'm sure because you come across a very entrepreneurial. Any yeah, entrepreneurial see the, yeah, the type of books. The type of books that I have up there are like R Richard Dawkins, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, Art of Letting Go, really deep spiritual stuff. Um, I genuinely, there's a really good book called Hype Yourself by a girl called Lucy Werner. Um, and it's really, really um, in depth in the sense of once you've read guides like Moz's Beginner's Guide to SEO, all of Neil Patel's Advanced Guides, to then go and read a book like that, it kind of then segues into, oh no, we're, we're talking to people in the human way, you've been learning the robotic SEO way, and you're learning the proper PR approach to growing a business in a nice way, and then segue into then using software automation like Lemlist, which mm. we, we've got 15 accounts and we shamelessly are sending hundreds of emails pretty much 24 seven across all of them. Um, and they provide these extensive guides where it's to the point where you can literally have a mug of coffee and I can send people a picture and it will have their name on it, but it, I'll pull it from CSV. So I can do these really elaborate outreach emails where I'm standing behind there on the whiteboard and it's a screenshot of their website that I'm trying to get a link on. <laughs> but I've sent it 300 times. I've auto-generated it 300 wow. times and they actually think I've done that. You know? <laughs> um, to definitely get on Lemlist and go through all those guides. That guy is, you know, if you guys have used Lempod, Lemlist is is the same guys behind um, behind that company. Perfect. Amazing. Yeah. That's really good. Um, where should marketing professionals be spending 80% uh, of their time in, in this field of the backlinks? So in terms of learning, um, you know, I think they should be spending all their time devouring courses and actually taking action and yeah. finding prospects, email um, and the most correct and accurate information. Um, and then obviously that time should really be outsourced as well. So finding the best processes on how to find that, the best, most accurate information so that you can have all your time on the individual, the author, this website, the content and what's actually going to be, you know, materialising on the website. Yeah. Um, um, and just before I ask the final question, um, where can you, where, where can people find you if they want to hear more? Um, and do you have any requests to the audience? Um, people can find me on LinkedIn, James Gregory SEO, Facebook, James Gregory SEO, Twitter, James Gregory SEO, and also my YouTube channel. I've got a really in-depth video on how to get SEO clients in 2020, which is really appropriate right now. Yeah. So I guess in the sense of just go out there and help people. Um, obviously, don't start spamming people and emailing people, but start putting a battle plan together. So that's on my YouTube channel, James Gregory SEO. Um, have, just search how to get SEO clients. James Gregory, you'll, you'll find it. Awesome. My final question, James, is yeah. how would you summarize this podcast and um, how would you say people can be excellent at, in SEO and link building? 
Well, I'll summarise it with just this is real actionable link building tactics from someone that's actually in the trenches doing it, you know. Um, yeah. These are the B2B, the sales and outreach techniques and things that you need to make sure are in your standard operating procedures. If you want to build a link building agency, if you want to build really nice links for your brand, if you use my ethos of position the brand in such a nice way, while also a positive message out into the industry, while being a really strong link, you can do lots of BD development on there as well. Um, speak to people on an individual and personal basis. Remember, it's a human on the other side of the of the uh, of the email, and you can just call them up and just talk to them. Yeah. And find experts in your fields and brands, and you know what? People don't realize that in their own personal networks that there's so many clients, opportunities, collaborations, when I've done stuff in casino, when I've spoken at events in different countries, um, but by joining communities like the Proper SEO Group, I have 25,000 individuals where I know any country I go to, you know, someone will be happy for me to stay over. I've been to like Milan and stuff, and, and it's just mm -hmm. like, oh, come just, 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 just come down, you know? And you can give people free advice, and definitely a community of like-minded people um you know i read a very interesting book recently um i can't remember the exact uh, name but one thing really resonates with me was it mentioned uh, you have a tribe so if you have a tribe in your head of say 150 people because that's our brains were hardwired make sure that you've those people are you know on your path purpose and mission and you're all helping each other and just deliver on your promise you know like a brand is literally mm. just a promise you know you can you know just deliver and just do um just do the best that you can do really awesome um, well uh, I've, I've really enjoyed this james i'm, I'm definitely gonna watch you. this one back and yeah uh, well, it, was, it was exciting make, make some notes and stuff i've definitely yeah. felt like i've learned from this so really appreciate your time i know you're a busy no worries, so yeah i'll uh, we'll connect again soon perfect thank you very much again cheers, cheers.